Black Alpha Network. Power to the people. I don't have to deal with other things, but our mission is to get tangibles specifically for us. And stay on the mission. That's all I would say. Peace and love to the family. Peace to you, my brother, as always. And exactly, uh, and we stress that over here often, not to get involved in time-wasting conversations, dealing with the time wasters, because that's all they're doing. Uh, like my brother always says, time-wasting tethers. And that's what they're good for, to get you distracted, get you off square, because their whole agenda is to, to kind of get your laser focus cloudy and blurred. So then you'll start looking at this, you'll start looking at that, and pretty soon you're dealing with every other minute issue versus the major issues at hand. And see, that's, again, it's all about getting you off your square and getting your attention off of what your focus is on, which is reparations and justice. And they're trying to avoid being on the bottom of the pecking order. Like I said, they're trying to avoid being on the bottom of that totem pole because they already understand that their ankles are already primed and ready for position. So, uh, Black Alpha, did you want to chime in on that, brother? Hey, man, everything that all my brothers and sisters have said, I agree with 100%. It's all about being on code no matter what. And if you're going to G-check somebody, do it on the way to the bank. Do it while you go and get the money. Do it while you're making something happen. It's all right. We multitaskers. If you got to go ahead and backhand somebody, just go ahead and backhand them without even looking. You know what I'm saying? Keep looking forward and just reach behind and pap them and then just keep on pushing. You do that, everything will be damn good and we'll be on game. But I see, uh, what's the guy named AP? I ain't even going to try to pronounce your name. You've been on stage. Uh, go ahead. You're going to mute yourself. All right. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I am originally from Ghana. And of course, <clears throat> Um, I think that we, as uh, Black people, I use we because of uh, my history, or the history of Africa. Uh, when I came out here to the United States, uh, there's one thing that I realized that the history in terms of slavery, uh, the Black world or Africa, is different from what we were told and how what we were taught in Africa. From where we were thought from, we saw the castles, we saw the fort. We went to the places where the slave trade happened, where people were kept, what they've been through, so on and so forth. We were trained, we were educated to see every black person as a brother and a sister. And therefore, growing up all the way from the 80s, 90s, every black person all over the world has been seen as a brother and a sister based on education and what we know our history to be. If you go down in history, Malcolm X, uh, Du Bois, uh, um, just name all the top, you know, African American leaders who spearheaded the, you know, the black movements. They were all one time in Africa, specifically in Ghana. They were partnerships. Africa supported, uh, uh, what do you call it, the movement of black uh, empowerment in the United States worldwide. So it's so hard for you know once in a while to see this whole back and forth between Africans and African-Americans, superiority, whatever. At the end of the day, trust me, if Black Americans are not doing well, Africans will not do well. If Africans are not doing well, Black Americans will not do well because they look at the color. It's the color that the world judges. It don't matter where you are, where you're from. As long as your color is the same, you are branded the same. So I would want us to have a sick can look at how we see each other. The battle is not about who is this and who is that. I'm talking about somebody fled, somebody fled, so on and so forth. There are a lot of things that maybe you just see on the TV that's not true. I can tell you on authority that the United States goes around scouting for people worldwide to come here and work for the United States. It's not that people flee. They look at your potential. They look at what you do. They come to you and say, hey, we can give you this. We can give you that. We want you to come work with us. We want you to come stay with us. We'll give you everything. So when you see you know, people migrating all over the world, it is not that they fled. It is because the United States themselves created the platform, gave the opportunity that, listen, come for a better opportunity right here. And not everybody sees it the way probably it's seen on TV. There are a lot of things that I didn't know. I lived my entire life in Africa, in Ghana. But there are a lot of things that I didn't know that was happening until I came out here and saw them on TV. And I asked myself, 
where are these things happening in the part of Africa? And nobody knows. So I would urge all of us that, listen, the battle is not about where each and everybody is coming from. As long as we have the same color, that's where we have to stay united and fight for a better tomorrow. Believe it or not, reparation, that is great. Africa has been calling for reparation for years for what they stole from us. All the resources, the natural resources that move from Africa on a daily basis. It is on record, we all know, Africa is the breadbasket of the world today. If you say that, you know what, let every African move out of the United States. Trust me, there's one thing that will make everybody happy. But in return, let every white person move out of the United States, out of Africa. And let's, let's close the border. No more gold, no more diamonds, no more oil, no more cotton, no more stuff for phones, for cars. Let's cut everything off and let's see what happens to the rest of the world. If you walk to Costco and you buy a shirt for $20, you're going to get it for $150 because the places where you get those resources, it's no more available. So instead of us constantly fighting against each other, why don't we just unite for the bigger cause? Because Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all of them, they were all in Africa at some point for whatever reason, because they saw themselves as one people. And the movement was worldwide. So respectfully, there are a lot of things that we need to study. There are a lot of things we need to know about each other. That would help all of us, rather than seeing each other as somebody think he's better of okay. the Okay, may I please respond? Because I can't take it no yes, more. Can I please, please respond? Can respond? Let's put a cap in it. Let's Go ahead, Marcel. Go ahead, okay, Go ahead first of all, Apia. No, wait. Okay, because what you're saying is the same kind of whining to be very honest with you, that we hear all the time. Okay, first and foremost, first and foremost, you made a statement that it's about color, not linear. That's a lie. Y'all can't have it both ways up here. When people say that Africans sold Africans, y'all like to say, no, it wasn't like that. It was tribal warfare and people sold enemies of enemy nation. But now you want to say it's all about color. So which one is it? Is it color or is it lineage? I can tell you what it is for us. It is lineage. We are Black Americans. You don't step off an airplane and have the same story and same struggles as we do here in Black America. You do not. And you definitely don't have the same debt that is owed to you that this government owes Black Americans who are Black descendants of American slaves. So it is not about color. It is about lineage. That is first and foremost. Second of all, you keep trying to have, make us have this emotional connection to Africa. We would still be Africans, a lot of us, if Africans had not sold us, okay? Let's talk, let's be very, very clear about that. We are not Africans, far from Africans. I am not gonna be ashamed of my African roots, but I'm sure as hell not gonna go around claiming African. I am a black American. And the reason for that in large part is because other Africans abandoned us. And I am not, can you please mute your microphone? Can you please mute your microphone? Yes, thank you. And I am not talking about just the slave trade. I am talking about how y'all had 400 damn years to send ships over to America to rescue us. Y'all had centuries to stand up and fight for black Americans and you never did. But now that Black Americans have fought like we've always done, now that we built a country that at the end of slavery, we alone had 42 to $84 trillion that we raised in America. We didn't see a penny of it. And then we had the Civil Rights Movement, which passed the Immigration Act, which is why you're over here. So now that Black Americans have done all the fighting and we continue to fight, now you think you can get on an airplane and come over to America and tell us how we should feel about a battle, about a war we are under in which you never lifted one damn finger to help us? How dare you? If you had nothing to say for the past 400 years when we were suffering, don't have any damn thing to say unless it's for us to get what we are owed specifically from our, our government. Okay, people like to call Africa the motherland, our mother. Okay, I used to say that too. And then I said, okay, 
if Africa is our mother, then she's the worst damn mother I've ever, ever seen. Because what type of mother will let their kid get snatched from them violently and then see their kids going through the worst abuse in the history of mankind and not lift one goddamn finger to help her own children. But now that you get to come over to this country and you probably came over as a student or probably came over as a professor, you think you get to tell us how we should feel about the pain that we are going through, about a debt that is still owed to us? How dare you? Next, you, you told a lie. Africans have never, ever, and Caribbeans have never, ever, Afro-Latinos, never, ever, Afro-Europeans have never been at the forefront of any fight for Black Americans. That's a goddamn lie. The only people who have, don't you wait a minute, I am talking. You wait a minute, please. The only people who have been at the forefront of fights for Black Americans are Black Americans, always. Anyone that came and probably took some leadership role in a fight that we had, they came and took a leadership role in a fight that we had been fighting for centuries. It's easy to put the seed in the soil when we done dug up and tilled the dirt. Y'all like to come and sit in a house on a sofa in a house that we built and say, look at me, I'm living in the house now. Yeah, after we built it. It was black Americans, the first president of Nigeria, the most famous rebel fighter against the colonizers in Malawi, the first president of Ghana. They all came over to America and black Americans took them in. And all three of those men said in their autobiographies and biographies, they all said that it was the fighting spirit of black Americans that led them to keep fighting against the colonizers. I'm not saying they weren't fighting before then, but according to them, they weren't fighting the way they were until they came to America and saw the way that black Americans were fighting outnumbered and all alone. Cause y'all sure as hell never helped us. It is black Americans who put pressure on our government to sanction South Africa to start apartheid, okay? It is Black Americans who helped our government start the invasion of Angola and Mozambique. It is Black Americans who helped raise billions of dollars when this white behind people in America and Europe weren't sending Africa a penny or any of the medication. It is Black Americans who are always fighting for every other black group to come to America and do better, but to also stay in their homeland and do better. But where is that same fight for black Americans when we need it? Where are you and people who are like you? Where are y'all when black Americans are now trying to get the reparations we are owed? Trillions of dollars. The only time y'all wanna speak is to try to tell us how we should feel about centuries of injustice that we have been fighting alone while y'all ass was in a majority black country not going through anything and you sure as hell weren't helping us. So don't come over here telling us how we should feel and how we're all in this together. We ain't all in this together. You just got here last week. We've been here for centuries and y'all sat back and watch us go through hell and did nothing to help us. Don't you come over here and tell us how we should fail. I would have to agree with that. Let me just chime in real quick. Um, something else that I just noticed by what this brother just did is he misrepresented the relationship with American, white America and immigration. He, he made it seem that white America is not going around the world recruiting buffer classes to stack the deck against foundational black Americans. But I just want y'all to listen to the fact of how willful these people will come over here and basically stab you in the back while telling you let's all stick together. Because what this brother is literally saying is the white man is coming over here to further his oppression on you by allowing us to come in your, our, your country that you fought for us to get into. And then we just gonna come over here and get our bag on. And so now, now let's all stick together. 
The only reason you're in this conversation right now is because you do not have any dibs on our reparations. So that's why we're hearing all of this stick together talk. But I'll tell you when we need to stick together, how about that 55 billion that the US has given Africa? Let's talk about, let's talk up on that money, the money that you're getting from us right now. And no, and not near one of them, all of us sticking together leaders, mention foundational black American struggle at all. And they're up there talking about the damage done to Africa by slavery. And guess what? Your leaders of Ghana had nothing to say. So we're going to have to keep this a thousand and on the level. And just like, we're not going to do the whole lion thing, but Black Alpha, I know you also got something to say. Go ahead, my brother. I reject fully any double-sided it's us versus them we needs to get it together we needs to quit fighting we needs to all come to the table no y'all got problem with us salute to my brother Kaba. Kaba always says our only problem is that you got a problem if you ain't have no problem there wouldn't be no problem foundational black americans have been in foundational black american lane handling foundational black american business with other foundational black americans and honestly we don't even think about africa if Africa fell off the face of the earth tomorrow, honestly, we'd still be out here fighting for reparations. I hate to break it to your partner. That's just what it is. Nothing stops this train. We keep it moving 24-7, 365. Because just because we live rent-free in everybody else's mind don't mean that these motherfuckers live rent-free on our mind. They don't even exist. And that's just what it is. If anybody's got a problem with that, then you can travel way back in time, get in your tethered time machine, go way back in the day, and remember that while we've been right here on this island by ourselves. The only people. And here's the thing. Don't come here talking that brother stuff. Don't come here talking that brother. The only person who calls a foundational black American sister a sister is a foundational black American brother. The only person who calls a foundational black American brother brother is a foundational black American sister. We are the only ones who've ever had each other's back. And the whole world's mad right now that they done put us out here by ourselves. And guess what? We start to like being by ourselves. It's a good goddamn thing. That means all we got is each other. We say we all we got. And it used to be funny. It used to be y'all stay over there, Akata. When we start talking about money and dollar bills, now it's come home, brother. Nah, stay with the Akata stuff because all my brothers and sisters is right here. I don't have to run nowhere. I don't have to hide. If you want to see the greatness of foundational black Americans, open your door, your tether door, step outside and look at the country because it's the country that we built and we did it with ourselves. My brother says, keep the work going. Okay, first of all, um, I want to straighten out some fallacies that were addressed. Um, you're saying that the USA is going around um, searching for people like that. That's not true, sir. A lot of you people come over here illegally, and they come here on H-1 visas or whatever the case is, and then they turn into citizens later on, or their children become citizens because of birthright citizenship, sir. So again, don't don't mislead that. And if the U.S. is going over there, they're getting the doctors. They're, they're not taking no rinky-dink motherfucker that's working for Uber. They don't want that. So let's not let's not mislead that. Again, I live in, I live in New York City, okay, one of the capitals of of immigration, I would say, in the nation. And they're not looking for people that are sitting outside of you know um, Home Depot. They, they they're just not. So um, for you to say that the U.S. is going around looking for people, that's being disingenuous to the people that do not live in. Hold on, that's being disingenuous to the people that do not live in these in these states that they're seeing immigration every single day. New York City just took in 5,000 illegal immigrants. I'm calling them illegal immigrants from, what is that, Venezuela? So let me guess, the, I guess they recruited them too. So again, let's let's not be disingenuous up here, sir. And again, you, you're saying that there's some type of brotherhood. Like Marcel said, we were sold by women like the Dahomey women. We, we were sold by other African people here. And then you didn't come here meaning America, to come save us. Why not? You guys, I guess, you know, you're so proud of your country. You walk around with your flag. You, you, you show all of that off to the world. But do you really have strength over there? Or are you still just colonized by the white man? When it comes to, like, standing up and rebelling against this white man, we've always led the charge. We're leading the damn charge today. So, again, if you're trying to come around us with this whole brother talk, I mean, you, you could spare that. I mean, you are black. I'm not denying that you're a black person. That's fine. But we're talking about a specific lineage that we share since the 18, 17, 16, 1500s. We're different. We're not the same. When, you, when does the person stop being you? 
400 years after he leaves your nation, he's still you? You take a Jamaican out of Jamaica for 400 years, that motherfucker's not Jamaican anymore, sir. Okay, so again, you say, oh, you guys are just like us. No, we're not. We've been here since the 1500s. Some of us the 1600s. I trace mine to the 1700s, sir, on this land. So again, you know, um, when you're saying that we're one, oh, okay, you, you want to be one? How about this? We're going to do this for one. Go back to your country and tell them to send an army over here because the foundational Black Americans over here want reparations. So I think that'll be great. If you want to do us a favor, you want to look out for us, do the same thing we did for you in your country. And with that, I'm going to Brother Dave, it's on you. Man, what's going on, y'all? God damn, y'all already done cut the oven up to 425 degrees. You feel what I'm saying? But um, I got a question. I got a question for you. Y'all lucky my page locked right now because I found some interesting information on your page that I would definitely have shared in the Jumbo Tribe. Um, are you from Ghana, sir? That was a question to you, bro. You from, you from, you from Ghana? How many, yes, sir, um, yes, how many ethnic groups do y'all have in Ghana? I think it's like 16. oh you think it's you think it's about sixteen has um give me the name yeah, of 16. the leader that has gotten together with all sixteen of them and told them that they're the same. There is There's none. No like that there is none. Out. There is none. Okay, so yeah. so, 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 so let me so, let me update you. On so how so, it works. so here in America, you ask the question, we uh, no no I know that's works. not how it works. Let so what you're telling us that's not how okay. it works over here either, my friend. Do you understand the logic? If it doesn't work over there for y'all 16 different ethnic groups, it does not work over here in America, sir. Do you understand that logic? No, 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 no. There is no at long is nothing. It doesn't work. They know there are 16 different lineages. There are 16 different tribes. They all have their unique. Because they speak 16 different languages. Okay, different languages. All of that is totally cool. They have they have different cultures. We all Ghanaians. They have different cultures. Yes, but we all Ghanaians. Okay, they have they have different cultures. So here in America, we have been fighting. We 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 already fought past that whole difference between the whole East Coast, West Coast beef, um, down south, up north beef. We've already fought past tribalism. Um, so, so when you're coming with solutions that, um, that doesn't work necessarily in your home country, um, it's not going to work like that over here. So, so what, what's your definition of something that doesn't, that doesn't work? Hey bro. So, so I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it short. Um, you, you probably about, now, I want you, you to probably about specific. two years and $2 too short. You get what I'm saying? Like we already delineated, like there, there's, there's no going back. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there isn't no beef with y'all, you know what I'm saying, with any melanated person um, who comes over here and stuff like that. But there is a, a sole, pure focus on just Black Americans that have lineage to this continent. You get what I'm saying? Does, does, that, does that make sense? All right, y'all, I appreciate the time, man. Hey, I want to say real quick, Mary, I'm just going to be very quick, too. I want, there was one point I forgot to respond to. First of all, um, Apia, first of all, I forgot to respond to that BS thing you try to pull. So I get so sick of this whole, well, the reason we come to America is because America is destroying our whole nation. That is bullshit. I am so sick of that excuse. First of all, don't talk about America is stealing things from your African nation when your asses were giving them your best resources for centuries, black Americans. America ain't stealing your resources. Y'all were giving them away. You know, I have proof that y'all were giving them away. I am proof. The fact that my family is here is proof that y'all spent centuries giving your resources to America. You were selling them for umbrellas and bottles. Second of all, you want to talk about America is taking your resources. Okay, I'm never going to defend America ever. But let me tell you this. What about your corrupt leaders who are sitting there giving away your resources? Shouldn't you be, instead of coming on the Twitter space telling us that we are somehow benefiting from America and that's why your ass is over here, why aren't you going to your leaders in Ghana and telling them to stop being corrupt and giving your resources away. That's what I'm doing as a black American. 
I am here in my country telling my country that they owe my people. I'm not running off to Ghana and telling Ghana how they owe us because we are the same color, okay? If anything, Apia, you owe us too because the Akshanti and the Akon, they were heavily involved in the slave trade, heavily. So let's not go there, player. Let me say this too, for all the people who say, oh, we had to flee to America because America caused mischief in our country. So they cause mischief in your country and your answer is to run to them. So somebody robs me, do I run to his house to get away from him? So you ran to America to get away from America. I call bullshit on that. How you feel about that, Sister Miriam? I call double bullshit on that brother, Black Alpha, because number one, when he was up there um, getting ready to do the little song and dance trying to strong at our emotional heartstrings um, saying that America, what if we took all the gold from um, uh, back from America, back from America, if we took all our other resources he was naming. Number one, white supremacists been over there carving up Africa like a goddamn pizza for hundreds of years. And then like brother Marcel so pointedly pointed out that um, you were giving away your most valuable resources, which were your black children. So um, my ancestors been here on this soil in America for thousands of years. And then when the slave trade and all that the fuckery happened, part of my ancestry come from children of being a child of chattel slavery. So therefore, that makes me a whole different phenotype because we've been here and our ancestors always been here. Y'all are under the misguided information that we only came and, and exist because we are children from, you know, uh, chattel slavery. No, that's part of our lineage, a part of our ancestry. And like the brothers and sisters so pointed out, that's been over almost 500 and plus plus um, 560 some years. So um, yeah, you need to be telling um, Europe, all of Europe, white Europe to give you um, reparations. You need to be telling white Europe, what if we take our resources? Hell, you need to be telling China right now who's raping you without a condom um, to give you your, uh, what if we take our resources? Hell, y'all up there allowing them to beat you with belts and, and, and film you in their language. Got your kids singing songs saying, I'm black, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, and every damn thing else. And when we try to pull your coattails about a situation, you get mad at us. Pan-Africanism been died. Pan-Africanism been died a long time ago when we seen that that shit was one-sided. We, it's very few that we can um, point to. And we put them in that position because they were B1, black first. And they understood our struggles. And then while them helping and learning from us, we're able to go over there and help get some things done over there. And I'm not saying that y'all don't have any type of revolutionary people. The few that were standing strong, you know, was killed off. Y'all allowed them to kill off, be killed off. Y'all not just particularly saying you um, from Ghana, but I'm saying the whole of Africa. You sit there and let your people be martyred and murdered in the streets and nine times out of ten it's half of the people who turns on them, your own kind that turns on them and help white supremacy do it to get into certain positions to hold down over there. So um, I didn't like that sideways slant that you came to us with and tell me some um, we should be together and then you want to damn all lives matter the situation. No, the only fucking thing that matters, the only situation and people that matters are the people right here. My FBA brothers and sisters right here in this room and right here abroad and, and, and out that we are um, sending signal boosters being a voice for. Um, we tried all that. We don't knock you for trying to do 
better and want better for yourself, but you got to realize that some of the ones who are so-called recruited, we get that because we know that those are ops that come over here and cut deals to be in the bed, in the belly of the beast of the USA. We we realize that her tentacles reaches far and wide and um, you all are tainted because you allow yourself to be tainted because you lust for what we have. You lust for our culture. You lust for our resources, our education, our entertainment. Hell, you lust for our hair, our style. You lust for those things instead of appreciate, appreciating your own. And then you want to holler about your culture, but your youth is beginning to forget your culture. They say an elf your culture. They don't even respect the elders. If it's not directly from your family, they don't even respect the elders that are in your community um, because it's white supremacy been allowed to go over there to give them the Bible and end up with the land as usual are going to make sure that they keep their foot down on the indigenous people of your many um, land over there. So that's how that shit works, Lism. And we've been past all that. We got rid of that shit when we realized that they were using Willie Lynch to pick color against color and old against young and all that shit. We've been exercised that demon except for certain classes over here, coon classes that we call boule. And we earn them motherfuckers out every chance that we get. We don't let those people speak for us and control things for us. We call that out. So it's time that you all call out your own class of tethers we're not saying all of you are that we're we're too intelligent to make that type of blanketed statement but we're saying that you're letting far too many as so eloquently as brother black alpha pointed out that if 80 percent i'm i'm gonna say 80 percent because it is it, it, it very much seemed to be so on point that's our own statistics and we have a right to create them why because we're living in it and we see it every damn day um that the majority keeps quiet and let that stuff fester and they come over here and then even when we allow you over here because it's allowed trust if it wasn't for um the 14th 15th uh amendment 16th amendment uh which they took and gave everybody else rights and 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 tangibles and resources other than us was written especially for foundational black americans on this land but yet they flipped it to give it to you all to come over here to be a bumper class to serve for them so that you can help try to keep us down to give you all our resources while they give us nothing you tell me where's the justice in that when we fought for you all when it was apartheid going on over there we fought for you all um for the shit that went down in rwanda and you got two of the same looking people um fighting against each other because they let the dutch and everything else influence them on that petty bullshit we tried to tell you how white supremacy moved and but yet just you, you snare your nose up and you come over here thinking you're better than somebody we truly train over here and um yeah that's a whole different thing too and think you're smarter than us when you come over I, 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 I beg to differ. Matter of fact, I don't beg for shit. I'm saying it's different. And then just like if you pit our brilliant people against any other ethnicity group, we were all performing, all do their asses. Because why it won't be, I'm white and I say so, lopsided ass statistics that don't matter and they don't ball up to anything, even a water tissue that I can wipe my behind with. I'll yell my time. Facts. Well, can can Dude, I respond facts. to that real quick? Can I respond to that real quick? Hey, you can respond uh, to that real quick. You can respond, but let me ahead. let me go ahead. I got a question. You came in and you started All Lives Matter in us and you started hitting us with MLK quotes. And let me just tell you, when foundational black Americans hear people start hitting us with MLK quotes, we already know there's an agenda there. Unless you say in MLK, we coming to get our check, then we're going to side eye you. But you brought up Malcolm X and you brought up Martin Luther King. Who is the Martin Luther King in Africa? Go ahead. All right, thank you. I think that no, no, uh, no, no, no. Answer that. Who, who is the Martin Luther King in Africa? Give me uh, the Malcolm X in Africa. Give me the Black Panther Party, the Huey Newton, uh, the Bobby Seale, the Fred Hampton. Who are those people in Africa? What are your versions of those? Give me names and dates. They don't have one. We don't need to have one. What we have okay, exactly, exactly. You, no, you do need to have one. No, 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 no. Listen, you do need to have one. You do need to have one. You need to have two, three, four, five, five million. Because when we look at the condition of your continent, y'all are still enslaved. Y'all still have shackles on, and you still have the same colonizing stuff going on today. Family, I want everybody in this room to just notice. So it's funny that you can use. Listen, the point is, I'm talking. 
The point is I'm talking. The very fact that you can use a Martin Luther King quote, and then when I ask you who is Martin Luther King in your continent, not country, in your continent, and you said we don't need to have one. Family, all my FBA brothers and sisters in this space right here, would you ever trust somebody in a system of white supremacy who says they don't need a Martin Luther King? They don't need a Malcolm X. They don't need a Black Panther Party. Now, mind you, they got a whole continent of seven billion people to pick from. You can't give me two. I only ask two. You can leave out everybody else. Just go with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. That's what you said. You said there are none and you can't name any and you got seven billion and we live in a country with roughly about 50 million of us. Brother, take notes. There's a pen and a pad. You probably came over here as a college student, so I know you know what a pen and pad is. Pull out that pen and pad, start taking notes, and understand that when it comes to the system of anti-black racism and white supremacy, either your ass is on the side of the supremacists or you're on the side of black folks. So all that all life matter stuff that you was talking is out the window because we see not only do you not understand what it's like to be pro-black, we also know that you really have an affection for white supremacy because if you didn't, you wouldn't say that you don't need people who fight against white supremacy. With that said, I'm going to let Zilla go and then I'll let you respond, but I'm warning you, if you say some cool tell the stuff, I'm dropping you. We're just going to put it like that. Zilla, go ahead, family. Yeah, my, my thing is this. Uh, when I hear the I, we don't need one. That that is a dis. And you know your argument is disingenuous from the beginning. So you that's you're coming here. Uh, this is our issue, and this is why we use the word tether, because the language. And we did a uh, we did a space. We did a uh, a live matter of fact on my broadcast about the language, and this is what we're talking about: the language of distraction and disruption. And you came over here talking about how, number one, the Americans, when you're talking about the American government, you are talking about the system of white supremacy. So either you're on the side of that or either you're against that, but you try to set that aside to say that we are the problem. And then us delineate, which we've always been here in America by ourselves, delineated because when you hear many people talk in Africa, especially in Ghana, those people when interviewed, look at us as an entirely different group. So to say, this is the other lie that we also need to address, you said, African children are taught that we are brothers and sisters. That is not true whatsoever. And you would have to identify the countries that say that because there's more than not that say we're different. And so we, we can't be different and then brothers at the same time. So either you're going to acknowledge that we're different like everybody else from Ghana does, or you're going to say, well, I don't agree with my Ghanaian culture and looking at us different. And that's my part on it. Go ahead and respond. All right, uh, thank you. I think that uh, there's some misconception right here. It makes it look like somebody is hidden on another, you know, black community. I don't think that is the point here. The point I'm trying to raise right here is that there's nobody in Africa who would not understand what uh, African Americans are going through. That's the number one thing. And two, whatever you see African American go through because of past history, you as an African, you feel some type of guilt. So you have that guilt on your shoulder. You feel like it gotta be right because you look back of what you know is happening. The you bitch ass nigga up out of here. here. Nigga, you right? a bitch. Shut the fuck up. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, can I proceed? Go ahead, continue. Well, but before you go there, I got I got to call out some bullshit you said, man. I'm sorry. You got straight to the bullshit, so I got to get straight to the regulating. You said okay. nobody in Africa would ever feel any type of way about us and dislike us. Brother, I've heard hundreds of Africans say they don't like us, verbatim, in English. They ain't even saying it in Swahili or nothing. They said it. How do you respond to when I tell you for a fact that we've all heard Africans say racial slurs about us and talk about us in a negative manner? Now, you said there's none. None means not one, two, three, four, five. You said there's zero. How do you respond to all the ones who have said something? Brother Alfred, I can you said, I said, to, um, I said, there's no, listen, 
Brother Alpha, explain Go ahead, bro. exactly what an African American is. Because you keep on bringing that term up. How aren't you an African American, sir? Because we're, we're not that. So can you please stop saying that? You're offending some of these people in this room, please. So I don't know what an African American is, but would you care to explain that? What is that to me? Thank you. Well, that's I mean, an outdated term, by the way, that doesn't define us. Okay, well, if I mean, if you feel any type of way I can pull that one, I don't need to, you know, argue on, you know, that part. If black American is what makes it better, black American, that's no problem with that. What I'm saying is what I said is that there's no reasonable African person that will not feel what African American, uh, black American. You didn't say that. Do. You said there's none. You, now you adding reasonable boy. You hey, you you tell the two listen, seven. Listen. <laughs> you tell the two seven. You said there's none. You didn't say reasonable. That sounds good, but you didn't say reasonable at first. But go ahead. I know you backtracking. Go ahead. It, I'm, it's not a matter. You see, the point is that, for example, cited an example of Martin Luther King and all that. Everybody has their own heroes. Therefore, everybody respect their heroes for who they are and what they've done and what they bring to the table. And that's the reason I say that. Let's respect the heroes that everybody has for whatever purpose. Now, the issue of letting it look like, you know, um, somebody is better than the other person and all that, that is what I was trying to diffuse right here, that there's no point in, you know, saying that, oh, Africans are this, or blah, et cetera, et cetera, all those things. I don't think that it is necessary because I cannot also do same because at the end of the day, it's not progress. Okay, it is no progress. Nobody earns anything by looking down on somebody else and thinking they. Okay, I gotta stop you real quick, brother. We're not really concerned with like international progress. We got a hell of a lot of progress right here in America. Foundational Black American progress is all we give a damn about. And if you look around, you wouldn't, matter of fact, even be here in this country having this conversation with us if it wasn't about our progress, our ancestors putting in work that allow you to fly all the way over here and get in on the tangibles that we created. So when you start, you know, you start speaking to us and you lecture us about progress, progress over there in Africa is not progress over here. Progress over here is not progress over there in Africa. So we don't really need to hear about progress because we are a people of progress. OK, so when we start speaking about making amends with, you know, some type of relationship, man, y'all can deal with that over there. We good. Listen, there's a saying we say. There's something we say over here. We say, listen, 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 listen. There's something we say over here. Listen, there's something we say over here. And that is we straight. OK, we straight. We better than good. So don't talk to us about progress, meaning that your progress is my progress, because actually you're living in our progress. We're not living in yours. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to give you a personal example. I have friends right here. Some of them are lawyers. OK, and we make monthly contribution and to take uh, black people out of jail. We do that on every month. Do you think that we do that as a matter of we feel that somebody is better than somebody or because we feel we're from Africa and somebody is from whatever, it is because of how we feel and how we were taught. So it's not a matter of somebody feeling that we just want but force ourselves to be seen or force ourselves to be acknowledged. No, I believe that as you said, you're good, everybody good. Let's put that straight. If you're educated, we all freaking educated to the core. And there's no need for us to go toe to toe as to who did this or who did that. Whatever you think you can find, you can find it quadruple elsewhere, especially in Africa. So that's not the point here trying to feel that somebody's superior in terms of academic or knowledge, whatever. That's not what we're doing here. What I'm saying here right now is that whatever that has to do with blackness, it is something that every black person must support and encourage. So if black Americans are calling for reparation, they deserve it. And I believe that everybody must support that. But there's no point in pointing a finger, calling Africans all type of names and all that. That is not necessary. Because at the end of the day, after all is said and done, fuck you. Everybody you will sold your mirror. people. Uh, well, that's all I have to say. I, I will not insult anybody. If I said something that's offensive, please pardon my language. But I will not insult anybody. Brother, Thank you. Pr proceed, bro. We're we not all on that, so proceed. Hey, go ahead. Bro. Yeah, go ahead. We, we, we dropped him off stage. Continue. That's your piece, brother? Go ahead. You can continue. Well, all hey, right, then we'll please. keep it moving. Hold on, hold on. Hey, I got hey, something about that, uh, Brother Alpha, because you said something, you said that you're doing something for jail. Let me ask you a question, sir. Well, that's a democratic talking point. Why every time when you deal with black people, it has to do something with jail? Why is that, sir? Hey, 
Hey, hey, P, P, uh, what, whatever name you're, that's you. That question's for you. Where'd he go? Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time. Why, when dealing with black people, double A, P, P, whatever your name is, um, why does it have to do something with jail, sir? Why can't it be academic? Why can't it be anything else? Why do y'all relate to us, you and the Democratic Party? When you're dealing with black people, it has to be jail reform or some type of jail, something tied to jail, sir. Why is that, sir? They're talking to you, Apia. Yeah, he nah, he 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 fleeing. Then yeah. Marcel said they, they flee off of these. Uh, by, by the way, let me put it like this. He's sitting there talking about we take money and we do this from all this and stuff. And let me say it. All that money he's talking about is wealth generated by foundational black Americans. OK, just like this app he's sitting here talking to us on. He's only allowed to come here based on what foundational black Americans have done. So we can see the play right here. We live rent free in their mind and every single thing they do has us in play and we do not think about them. So no matter what he says, no matter what he does, all that backhanded undermining stuff, FBA, see your ass from a mile away. So when you come in here and you be slick and you talking in corners and rectangles and triangles, we're going to see every last one of those moves. We done seen it before. He tried to talk. Hey, Zilla, when I told him, you got good tether, bad tether. Didn't I say that, brother? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> he, he came in here as a good tether. We all the friends, brother. And then, then he started getting tether tough when Miriam checked him. He started getting tether tough. <laughs> he was like, I, whatever you say, man. I, brother, just whatever, man. Yeah, well, you can whatever your ass back to wherever you come from because all that generational wealth that we created is what's got you over here and the same people who are over here who generated the money are the same ones g-checking and making your ass flee right off of this stage east side is all on you hey real quick before east side is i was gonna ask him too i was gonna ask dude because see some of the things that he's talking like uh sage just said and i'm glad you pointed that out sage he's using democratic talking points so this is what I'm talking about, the disingenuous nature of these tethers. He is fully aware of all them extra policies and goodies that immigrants are getting. So what he's talking about, I said it earlier in this space, they understand if we're getting what we're getting, that might start cutting some of them programs that undercut those those uh, buffer class programs might be taking a, uh, an L. So that's when you start seeing, oh, man, and then it comes into the lopsided. We're only you guys are talking, calling us names, and it gets into that crap. Look, this man knows exactly what he's benefiting from in America, and he knows why he benefits from it in America. And he thought he was coming amongst unlearned individuals, and he found out differently. Shout out to all of you. Brother Eastsiders, it's on you, brother. Man, I'm glad that dude took flight and tethered his way on up out of here. Man, and I and like you, I'm glad uh our brother Sage uh, asked that question because I was gonna ask that. Y'all basically said everything I was gonna say for real, for real. Every last one of y'all, including our brother Marcel. Shout out to Marcel, man, because he get you know, you know what? Hey, Black Alpha is Red Bull, Marcel is uh monster energy drink. I'm telling you, man, that's just what that is, man. Yeah, man. And you know, what Marcel was telling them about how they kind of distant how they distanced themselves from us and how they didn't come back and fight for us, it made me think like, hold on, he's right about that. You know what I'm saying? It's not something I'm just now knowing. But when he's talking about some how come we can't all come together and everything, well shit, we the ones that tried. And we're literally the only ones that tried. But just like they white worship, how they, you know, because, you know, uh, they want to be white supremacists, too. So they believe in taking both sides of the argument. Notice he's brother, a place. Brother brother Isidus, get... Quick question for you, brother Eastsiders. He said he's from Ghana, correct? Yes. So let's let's talk about the right to a bully. Let's let's talk about that, sir, since you're from Ghana. And continue, Eastsiders. Um, hey, you and you know what? That's a good point. That is a very good point. You know, because we don't see them extending no real olive branch. We didn't talk about no right to a boat. We didn't come up with no janky ass solution, you know, for them to be here and put no extra measures and all this extra shit for them. Um, but they like they like to play both sides against the middle. They monkey branching basically. You know, everybody won hey, did nobody like the Cavs until they start winning the chap until they won the championship. You know, everybody wanna be on that winning team. 
when they want to get something from, they want to try to join in with us. When it look like we're losing, they want to go tethering off to the, you know, to white supremacy. And we not just, we just not going to stand for that. We go, we go and check all our boxes and we're going to stay 10 toes with it. And that's just what, that's just the way that's going to go. And I'll land there. Big facts, big facts. Um, Brother Kerman, it's on you. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, thank you very much. I just had to have some input on that last guy from Ghana. Uh, first of all, if you think about it, what he he said he didn't know out of seventy million people in uh, Africa, he didn't couldn't think of one rider. I mean, I'm from America, and I've heard about it, and I you know know about Julius Malima down there in South Africa. He's almost fighting a losing cause, but he couldn't think of one rider on the whole continent. That's just that. That's just how dysfunctional they are. I mean. They're so caught up in telling us what we need to do for ourselves or trying to be in our business that they can't take care of their business. I mean, that tribalism has them messed up. I mean, we can't respect them because you're the majority in the majority. I mean, you're the majority population in all of your countries, all of them, even South Africa. But your tribalism is so far off the chain. You let the minority run you and you want us to respect you. I mean, game recognize game. You, we not going to respect nobody. I mean, we over here, we're a minority and we're handling business. But you're going to come over here from your countries where you're the majority and you guys can't get it together to run your own countries. But you want to come over here and get in our business and tell us what we need to do. We need to all get along. Uh, I'm your brother. I'm this. I'm that. No, no, we can't respect that. I mean, the tribalism in South, even the white, I mean, even the Mazungus, in South Africa, no, they don't even respect you. They'd be like, man, how can we live amongst 25 million people and there's only 5 million of us come and take their land and then get mad at them and make them feel guilty about taking their land back? So, no, they, they think all of us are dumb because, like I said, Julius Malima, he's a rider over there in South Africa. He wants to throw everybody. He wants to kick everybody out. But he don't, he don't have no backing because, like I said, they are all have a colonized mind. So... And the other thing, he's like, we're all the same. No, we've been in America too long to be the same because you have different species of animals. I mean, you have a tiger. You know, you have a Sumatran tiger. You have an Indian tiger. You have the, uh, the one up there in Siberia. The Siberia. They all develop different traits and different habits. We've been, they've been separated so long to deal with their environments. So just the, the, the common, the just it's, it's frustrating for them to think that we're so unintelligent and we can't think for ourselves and they know what's better for us and we've been dealing with what we've been dealing with and our ancestors there's no way we could go to africa and do it they would put a burning tire around our necks if we stuck our nose in their business i don't even want to think about what would uh what would go down they're just ought to be happy that we're a compassionate people like we are but we kind of kind of like getting fed up you guys do you stay over there let us handle what we need to handle and let's just keep it Keep it going, you know. Keep keep it moving. But that's all I had to say. It's just it just gets frustrating when you hear their uh, the, the same constant. We're all brothers now that we all we're all brothers. We we're all brothers. Let's all just get along. But then when you go in your little rooms and everything, go behind closed doors, uh, Akata, you know, y'all the killers, y'all. And then he used like you said, oh, we go down there and get people out of jail uh, all the time and things of that nature. Well, how about helping them before they get in jail? What are you doing prior to them going to jail to assist? You want to be, you're trying to be the black savior or something like that. But uh, I'm going to land my plane there. It just gets very irritating. Peace there, one. Peace and respect, hey, brother. Me? Let me say this. Me? Yeah. yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me say it like this. On the road of life, you don't have to change lanes when you're comfortable with where you're going. When you're secure, well, where are you going? When somebody has to veer lanes, switch over, and get behind foundational black Americans, that means they're not secure with where they're heading. And if you notice, that guy was trying to associate Tether himself to us. We're not calling over there saying, we all brothers, we all family. Come on, man, let's get together now. Let's go have lunch. We ain't saying that. You got one person who's trying to associate, attach, and tether himself to foundational black Americans. And you have foundational black Americans saying, hey, we good. We straight by ourselves. We kind of like it over here just doing our FBA thing. So that goes to show you that we on the right path and we don't have to try to make friends. But they have to try to make friends with us because they see that bag coming. And here's the real fact everybody knows. And this is what we laughing at. Do not tell us 
that in the land of the most tribalism ever, that you get along with us way over here on the other side of the ocean. OK, you can't even get along with people on the other side of the village. All right. The other side of the desert. You beefing with this side of the desert, that side of the village, this side of the TP, five houses down on the side of the water well. Y'all don't get along with nobody. North, south, east, west. So when you talking about the continent that has literally been colonized 379 times, the damn tribes can't get along. The villages can't get along. Don't tell me that you're going to get along with us. That's a lie. And we see it and we call it out. Go ahead, Zilla. All right, can I can I come in? Uh, hold on now, um, real quick. Oh, you're back. You're back. Uh, yeah, just yeah. I'm we're gonna let you respond real quick. But uh, also, I just couldn't help but notice the um, like like we already mentioned the other African in the other realm uh, in that other space that was that was saying he he is black. He's black American because he was born here. But there's so many people that separate themselves from us. With that being said, um. He, you asked him who was the Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or Black Panthers of of Africa, and he couldn't d deliver up one, and then the brother comes up and follows him up with that, with, with, with a brother from South Africa. Now, I just want to point out the tribalism right there, because how don't you mention Nelson Mandela, Patrice Lumumba? You went straight out the playbook of tribalism in the midst of conversation of calling every black person all together and all one. You proved, you disproved your own argument with that little move right there, because I know you heard of Nelson Mandela. I know you've heard of Patrice Lumumba. I mean, hell, we, my, my cousin was literally named, man. my cousin was born in 1975. He's named after Patrice Lumumba. So you've had revolutionaries over there with the revolutionary heart and spirit, but mm, I don't know why you didn't mention them unless it's intertribal beef. You go ahead and answer, and we'll get to Sister Mary. All right. Uh, first of all, I don't think that um, I have said anything that seeks to more or less like attack uh, Black Americans. What I hear is the constant, you know, attack on Africa back to back, back to back, back to back. Somebody is saying that because there's a bag, I don't know where that bag is. I also just want to find out, for example, if you guys know the criteria of which one has to go through to come to the United States, I think it's very important that, you know, you check the various boxes so you understand that if people are here, it is for a particular reason than how it is perceived. Sorry, did you did, sir. But know, most sir, importantly, sir, sir. most importantly, you just said that the no, let, let me land, let me land. You let just me said land. that, sir. You literally just said a fallacy, sir. You said that the USA is going out looking for you guys, recruiting you. Now you're saying it's a bunch of red tape for you to come over here. So which one is it, sir? That's for you. Go ahead and respond. Uh, can, can I didn't hear a question. Can she speak up a little bit? Sir, don't, don't, don't do it, sir. My voice is deep in yours. Anyway, like I was saying, you said, you said that the USA is going out recruiting you guys, and now you're stating that it's a bunch of red tape for you to get here. So which one is it, sir? Okay, well, you, I, I want to believe that you're asking uh, what uh, the, the requirements are, right? Is that a no, question? No, that's not what I'm asking, sir. No, that's not what I'm asking, sir. But I, you said earlier in this conversation that the USA is going out recruiting you guys, and I said that's a fallacy. Now you're agreeing with what I said. You're saying that the USA is not recruiting you. It's a bunch of red tape. So which one is it, sir? A or B? What I'm saying is that, for example, in Africa, we call it brain drain. That's how we call it. Where professionals, where uh, educated people, you know, are baited to other foreign countries. That's how we call it, uh, brain drain. And uh, I would also want you to do research on what a brain drain is in Africa. That would probably help you. So let me put that aside because it looks like you have a lot to say but which are unfounded in terms of statistics or data. Now, I want to address the issue once again, that I don't see the point in constantly, you know, you guys attacking Africa, saying whatever negative things they want to say about Africa. When I have said nothing negative about black Americans, at least what I said has to do with the fact that there has to be support for black Americans. And then in response, all I get is an attack on Africans and the continent of Africa. So when you set a stage in that level, what do you expect the response to be? 
and what will be the overall outcome at the end of the day? That's a question I want us to ask our conscience. Attacking Africa for what purpose? Calling them whatever names you want to call them for what purpose? I'll tell you something that you don't know. When I was a kid, when you turn on the TV, everything they show about black uh, Americans, it's always something that I don't want to say. It created a whole perception, a whole different world about black American people. Is that what I, you want us to you know, believe that exactly what it is to everybody? No, there might be one little issue and they can blow it out of proportion. So instead of you, you know, using one, whatever you may have seen, that may not be exact representation of the entire continent, I'll suggest that you pipe down on it and rather look at the positives and stop the attack on Africa. Okay, let me ask this question real quick because, okay, you kind of sidestepped that, but let me ask this direct question. Um, you, you're saying that you're hearing an attack on Africa. What what exactly are you identifying as an attack on Africa that you're hearing in this space from the hosts? A lot of them. Trump, no, no, no. I can identify. Let me, let, me specific. Let, me be, let me be specific about it. That's what I asked. Yes. The trouble point that you raised, the ladies that said that, oh, we've been raped by, um, what do you call it, China, and we've been beat down, and all the words that you used. You heard all of them. What's the end goal of that? What wait, wait, wait. Is, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Is that not true? Is that not true? Are the Chinese not over there colonizing right now? What's your definition of colonization? You can speak. Uh, go, go look. At it. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's reality. No, you know no, colonizing this. No, you know what colonizing no. this. You see, that's what it is. You, you, I don't want to be informed or you want to watch the TV. That gives no, you no, no. Data. You're going to get informed today. You know what colonizing is. Okay. It, are there people over there from another country that is buying and regentifying your continent and enslaving you and whooping you with uh, bamboo sticks? Yes or no? No. Oh, boy, boy, go. Come on now. You, you, you're you babbling now. I, I, literally, no, we, you know there's something. No, you know there's something called a television, right? And there's images, right? And I just seen them. Listen, no, you listen. listen. I'm telling you, tell the man. This is what happens, brother. We've seen it. We've seen it. Like, we're not going to lie now. You, now you're just fronting now. Now you're just fronting. If you're going to come up with a lie, make it do it. I can name whole cities, sir, that are owned by the Chinese in Africa, sir. Do you want me to do that? If Chinese are in Africa, what's the big deal? Do you want to find out what's going on? If there? they are. If. No, no, Ain't no, no damn if. They, they are. Okay. Okay. Listen, you're moving listen. the goalposts. No. Right? Listen, can I, can I respond? Why are you guys so aggressive, though? No, we're not aggressive. We're just too smooth, brother. That's what we are. Listen, foundational black Americans, he know what time it is. He know what time it is. We the best. We undefeated. Foundational black Americans, we know exactly what's going on over there. We know right now that in Kenya, China has a damn airport, and they over there whooping Kenyans with bamboo sticks. The videos are out there, man. Don't lie. Come on, brother. I'm going to give you three seconds, okay, to respond to that. I'm going to give you three seconds. Is China over there colonizing Africa? That, that's an all right time's up <laughs> we gonna keep this thing moving we ain't got no time for that he gonna tell the babble yeah. man we gonna keep it fba man so uh hey, bye hey, bye me, brother can i chime in real quick just real quick already yeah. family go ahead and hey, my apologies to our sister i know she's been waiting for a hot sec but what the fuck you mean by we why we gotta be aggressive see that's that white supremacist talking point bullshit the fuck you mean aggressive see that's you know what all right, you know what? Go ahead, sis. My bad. East side. Everybody wants to play victim, bro. But again, no one really mentioned or attacked Africa. We don't give a fuck about what's going on over there, sir. That's why I want you to understand. Nobody cares. We're dealing with our business over here. This space is about our business over here. Running tethers out the paint over here. And I'm so sorry, my sister Marilyn. Go ahead, sister. I'm so sorry. Hey, check your cash out real quick. I'm about to drop down and listen to check your cash app. I just shot you some. Right on, Sister Miriam. It's on you, my sister. I'm sorry. Were you calling for me to speak? I'm. I got in the car, and you know how sometimes it gets janky when things are transferring. Yeah, it's on you, sir. I would like to re uh, respond to him since he have such. He's so butthurt about what I said. Like, like we, like we said, family. We built different over here. They're not used to chastising from another man, and they damn sure can't take it from a strong, foundational Black American woman. Um, Mr. Gunyan, just like your president, we hear all this hatred and vitriol 
for us not to come to your your uh stay out of Ghana. You're not welcome here. We all know we're dealing with the doorway of no return and all that. The steep history that you all have that you played in the um slave trade. And then, you know, you say that I said something to offend you when I just straight up told true facts. Um, you do have not only Asia, you have pretty much all of Europe, including the United States as well. These are governments I'm talking about that is over there steady carving up our big salt puzzle. And I'll say it again. Put your feelings to the side and hear what it is I'm saying to you. Let me summon two fucks to give when you're talking about emotions. Then you, um, you know, your president before his ass was voted out, your president was saying that all oh, we want Americans to get the reparations. They were so against us getting them, but all of a sudden we want them to get foundational black. We want black Americans to get the African Americans to get the reparations. And you come back home to Africa, come here and invest. I wish the goodness we would. We're not investing over there. We have our own homeland here in the United States to invest in. Number two, you sit up there and say that we're being disingenuous on what it is that we're saying when we've stated nothing but 100% facts and truths and we're coming from um, a place um, from our point of view, our experiences, because this is about our lineage. This is about our reparations. This is about us steady maneuvering in the shark infested waters of white supremacy, sir. And you are over here going to um, quote back to us some of our black leaders of the past, which was Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And you try to Y'all always try to shame us and steer us. What would they do? We know their true intentions and what they um, what they were talking about, um, what they show to you all. And you said if you wanted to be uh, educated or informed, you'll watch TV. Well, we know how how that's done and how that's stupid because you don't you you take a grain of salt with what you see on TV. You do the research for yourself. And where where's the lie, sir? What lie did I tell the new anchor babies in your own homeland, you know, in, 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 in your country, the whole continent of Africa? It's going all over the country, the whole continent of Africa. This is what they're doing. Instead of being on one accord or black first with the foundational black Americans and whose community that they are sitting up here um, making a living with, be it the uh, service station, be it whatever little bitty, uh, pathetic shops that they choose to put into the community. And guess what? They didn't get that shit by the bootstraps. They certainly didn't come over here with the wealth. They got it from government resources and funding that they neglect to give to their own citizens of this country. So, yeah, you're going to hear about it. We got to worry about if we go to the damn doctor or the hospital, if we're going to be alive to, um, to see our loved ones because they're just pretty much printing them damn, let them sit in classes for a few weeks and pretty much giving them damn degrees. And you are put into our communities to disperse our resources. They, they disperse them to you to um, disrupt our resources so that they don't have to give them to us. They got special programs in place just for you, the damn goods. So don't come to us trying to tell us that we are attacking you. We're not attacking you. We're speaking truth to power, power to truth. This is all facts. You can do the research yourself. And we're just trying to get you to overstand because you're here in our spaces. And then you want to um, sit on one hand, you try to spank us. In the other hand, you try to um, shame us. In the other hand, you want to kumbaya us. In the other hand, you want to fucking all life matter us. In the other hand, I'm your brother. I'm your sister. No the, no the hell you're not. And we don't have anything against you. You want to know why? Because we let you live here. We don't bother you. We're not doing crimes against you, but let's flip that script. People from the diaspora, be it Africa.
Africa or be it anywhere in any of the many islands of the Caribbean. Y'all come over here doing damn crimes, and then you want to use flat blackness that that's, uh, we're black. No, the hell you're not. Go on and say you're Jamaican like it is when you get that false ass um, diplomas and degrees. We're black when you're sitting up here committing crimes. So don't give us that bull crap. And I'll yield my time and let a brother or sister take on the rest of this because I'm driving and I'll just hear it. Listen. Yes, indeed, my sister. Fire as always. And like I said, that dude knew he was coming in bad faith. And <clears throat> I always enjoy exposing that because he everything that you just said, Sister Miriam, he's and what he's doing is coming over here talking to us like we stupid. And he has yet to understand. We peep that type of insult, insulting inner. So we get it. So we going but we let you speak and get your stuff off. But here's the one thing that we have to lock down as a perspective of conversation, especially when you come into our spaces. Foundation Americans are and has been the only group under major and constant consistent attack in america if they allow you to come to america is because additional black americans first the country for you to come to and then also the civil rights generation helped you get here so to have these conversations and say that we're picking on you well, first off, and with the high-minded level of, uh, you know, they come and seek us out and, you know, they come and get the best and brightest. No, they don't. No, they don't. They go get the best coon they can go get. It's the red tape that you go through when you come here. Don't get it twisted. And then on top of that, you're double speaking because you said red tape, but then they're going to recruit you. Everything that you're talking about is absolute horse shit. See, there's we you're literally going down the tether routine of speaking. So first, I'm gonna come in with my brother Alpha says it all the damn time. Family, you see him come in. Oh well, you know, man, we all brothers and this and that. But you know, you guys are kind of lackluster in the mental department. Man, man if you don't get your ass out of here with that whackness, um, and and so for me. That dude is a textbook sign of what a tether is. He is a poster child for tether. And listen to the conversation. And I'm sure all y'all been in these spaces hearing these tethers talk. Has he spoke any differently? Does he have any different talking points than all of these other groups, which are tied to the Democratic Party because their status is married to the Democratic Party? Always remember that. That's why they don't, they're coming over here. Why do you guys hate Africa? That is a low key plea for the Democrats for us to stop attacking immigration. But I want y'all to know something, Africans, they're only using you. You still one big nigga, although you ain't a foundational black American, but they will use you. White supremacy, when it's done with its tools, they break them. So just so you know, uh, be aware that the breaking is coming coming forth to an African near you. Black Alpha, do you want to chime in on that before you get to the next hands? FBA sees your ass from a mile away. So anything that they come up with, we done already seen it, saw it, framed it. This man comes from Africa. We all know about the scramble for Africa, okay? And he said he didn't know what a colonizer was. He said if China's over there, as if we ain't got like video footage. Man, video footage is all up and down Twitter. You can easily see it. So this is the tethers that we speak about. And I love roasting tethers and salute to all of y'all because uh, that was what we call a real roast. That's what you do. All that be nice to him? Nah, uh-uh. He's trying to get tether tough at the end. And they only try to get tether tough when they know time's up. You know what I'm saying? So he knew what it was. And he started trying to hit that tether U-turn and go back in time because that's the only place where he can, you know, stand on something. Because over here, this is an FBA lane. So so we understand he knows all about white supremacy. He just wants to be a part of it. I know the very fact that every single race on this planet has enslaved Africans. OK, and I know that when people go over to Africa, they all get the royal treatment. They all get the red carpet treatment. You know, the only group that never gets any love when they go over to Africa 
It's foundational black Americans. FBA goes over there and it's a kata, it's go home, we don't like y'all. It's this, that, and the other thing. So the hate, the spite, the vitriol, the jealousy is easily framed and we don't framed it. It's easily to see and we don't saw it and we just keep running them tethers out the paint. <laughs>